everybody, it's Crazy Fangirl Shine. We hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we are going to be watching the eighth episode of Outlander season five. I'm pretty sure I, my memory is all over the place at the moment. Yes, yeah, season five. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, uh, my mind's been all over the place. Um, just with this whole coronavirus stuff, I've been doing so much studying and balancing it with Final Fantasy and everything. It's been busy. Um, but yeah, I hope you all had a lovely Easter. Happy Easter yesterday. Um, I didn't wish everybody in my Star Wars video because I filmed that on the Saturday and scheduled it to come out yesterday. So I completely forgot. And then I was like, oh shit, like I forgot to say Happy Easter. So Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you guys are having an amazing Easter. I know it's a very strange time. Um, I actually had a beautiful afternoon talking with my family over Zoom. Um, it, just like catching up with everybody was so amazing. Um, being able to just talk to them was so nice because I miss them so much. Um, it's really been a struggle. I miss seeing my family, I miss seeing my sister, and I miss hanging out with them. So hopefully soon enough I'll be able to give them all cuddles and give them some love because I think we all need it right now. Anyway, we're going to jump right into this episode of Outlander because there's so much going on. Mert is gone. <laughs> I'm still upset about that. Um, and uh, what else happened? Roger is apparently dead. Maybe not. People keep, keep like saying that there's stuff around him, so I'm guessing he might not be dead. Um, but anyway, let's just jump straight into this so we don't need to worry about anything else. I just... But before that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video, but also to keep up to date with all my other reactions to more TV shows, video games, and movies. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into this. This is strange. Okay, really? Oh god. Yeah, imagine being in that position. I don't think anybody can. Because, I mean, yes, they're telling him to speak, but... <sighs> Who knows what sort of, like, thoughts and, like, what sort of shock he's going through at the moment. Oh, no. <gasps> She's wearing the... <laughs> Why? Careful with me if we can't which goodbyes were our last. Oh. She loved Murta a lot and Murta loved her so much. Just wasn't meant to be. Oh. oh I hope you don't blame yourself, Jamie. It wasn't your fault. Oh. <laughs> Well, I like this setup of what they're doing with the silent films, especially because of what um, he's going through, like, the fact that he's silent. I like how they're using the power of silent film as well to show what happened to him. I like that. That's a really cool format. Just pausing quickly. Um, I guess this is also something that, I guess, like, because, yeah, they were living during the Vietnam War. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's because, I think, and even today, even with... Um, the soldiers who leave to protect our countries, even when they come back, I think a lot of people just don't understand what they're going through. Um, and I know I'm going on a little bit of a rant here, but this is the thing, like, um, it's the same with just mental health in general. Like, a lot of people just don't understand what a person's going through, and they just think, like, oh, they should be better by now. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing for Brianna, because obviously it's, like, that's the way that's been, you know, they don't really understand a lot of mental health issues back at that time, during the 60s and stuff, but even back, back, back then when they're in the past. Um, but, yeah, I guess, like, it's always important to be patient and stuff, and I'm hoping that Brianna learns that patience, because, um, and, you know, um, Claire did it, not forcefully, but she had to push Jamie to tell her because he was very suicidal and, you know, he was closing everybody off. And that was Claire's way of, you know, breaking that wall, which in a way worked. But, you know, in real life, I'm not sure if that would get the same reaction. It's quite dangerous to do that. But um, I hope Brianna ha will have the same patience that Claire did and be patient with Roger because, you know, he's going through this really traumatic event. Even though it's been three months, he still needs to work the, up that confidence to make that decision to talk 
and, or he, the decision that he wants to make a change. It's always important to um, allow them the choice. Um, yeah, just wanted to say that. Sometimes you must have patience. Thank you, John. Yes, John. Exactly what I was talking about. Have patience. Ian. Ian! Oh my god! We thought we'd never see you again. Are not lost and gone forever. Are so, you coming back? So what, you'll give up on him if he isn't? I can't give you the truth of it now. Why? I don't have the words. Did they torture him? But there are things you keep hidden from others. That's you true. include both. That's true. What he said. Sometimes you just can't tell anybody. You just have to go through it on your own. But sometimes we have to adjust our expectations. To bend and reshape ourselves. This substance on Earth. Oh. It's their first our wedding anniversary. I'm just asking though, does anybody really pay attention to that one wedding anniversary thing? You know how it's the first year it's paper, then it's diamond, then it's something? I think it's, no, it's not iron, but it's something like that. And does anybody really pay attention to that? People who are married, if you're married and you're on my community, does anybody do that? I don't really know, but anyway, yeah, I don't really know anybody who's done that. Anyway. Don't just say that and get up and leave. Give him a hug. Something. God damn. <sighs> this is why I don't understand the couple. But it's like embrace him. Give him a hug. Show him you loved him instead of showing us plain. Uh, but anyway. That's just me being me. I'm very affectionate. Some herbs missing from my surgery. That are incredibly poisonous unless administered correctly by a physician. Now I worry that he might. Well, Maybe Jamie should talk to him. I think he's ready to try. Wait, was it Ian taking the herb? It was him. No, no, someone stop him, please. Roger, please find him. Oh, wait, what's he doing? No, 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 please. I don't feel like crying today. I've had a good day. Oh, thank God. You have everything. And still you didn't want to be with them. It doesn't matter how much you have. Can you? Then again, can you take up your weapon and come home with me until you do? Damn, that's powerful. I'll talk about it at the end though. That's correct though. You can never change after a certain event. That was sweet. Ah, oh, okay. Kind of wanted to see what else would happen with Ian, but what an episode! God damn! Kind of was a little bit all over the place. Because, um, just at the beginning, I was just like, it, you know, it was all a little bit all over the place. Um, but. I did enjoy this episode. This episode was good. But I want to say I really want to give a hats off to Outlander for covering more stuff about mental health. It's so important, especially now, and but even just in general. It's always been important. And for taking that step into talking about it is so amazing, and I love it when shows do that. Um, I was re-watching Shadowhunters, and it kind of just made me smile that, you know, the topic of mental health was coming up so much in the last season. Um, that made me happy. But anyway, talk about this. Oh, they did such a good job. And 
Richard Rankin, I know that I've said that I don't like Roger, but in this episode, whoa, it was really powerful. And though I didn't cry, I have to say it did really move me because even though I don't cry, I'm still thoroughly moved by this episode because I connected with Roger so much. And, you know, with stories, especially with me, I always want to feel some sort of connection with the characters or, you know, emotion, etc. You guys know this. And goddamn did I connect with Roger on this one because you guys know this. I've had mental health problems in the past. I still do every day. Um, and, you know, to see them talking about, to, like, in a way it was like, you know, PTSD. Um, and also, you know, perhaps, perhaps depression maybe. Like, I don't really want to put a name on it because it can be anything. But, um, personally for me, especially with grief, uh, oh, I have too much, um... Grief is too much of an old friend, if I may say that. Um, yeah, and I just connected with this episode so, so much. Um, and yeah, again, Ro um, Richard did such a beautiful job in showing... Because, I mean, a lot of people put labels on it. You know, like when you are in that, you know, sort of mode where you're just by yourself sometimes in your head. They do say it's like, you know, what's it called? Like feeling sorry for yourself sort of thing. And yes, and this is something that I've always said, like, you know, it's always the person's choice, like, whoever's going through what they're going through, they have to make the choice to take that step forward, you know, because sometimes, um, I won't say it's good, but sometimes you need to sit in that feeling to unravel it yourself, because with me, it took me a couple of years, I won't deny it, but when I lost my grandpa, I did lose a part of myself, I understand exactly what Roger was saying, and even what Ian's saying, like, he l lost a part of himself. I lost a massive part of my identity when my grandpa passed away, because he was, you know, a constant in my life. He was the, one of the biggest supporters in my life who pushed me to do anything and everything. Like, he pushed me when nobody else would, and supported me when I felt like nobody else would. So, you know, when you do lose something like that, you do lose a part of yourself, and you do need to learn to kind of, like take, like, relearn, like, those steps to kind of, like, overcome different situations and, again, triggers. This is something that I love, they, you know, the trigger, like, um, Roger saw the, like, the fabric and he touched it and then he could just remember everything. Like, I totally understand that, tr like, the trigger thing that happened with him, but it was just so beautifully done and even with Ian, like, the fact that, you know, he didn't physically show it and this is the perfect thing that they did. And they didn't do it enough with Jamie. I wish they did, but J there was three different examples for this. Jamie, Ian, and Roger. So, you know, Jamie, yes, he was hiding it, but he was drinking and But also he was kind of like, you know, talking to Claire about it. But then with Roger, you know, he was in him. And this is Roger and Ian are very similar. They kept it to themselves. They didn't show it much. Well, Ri like, not Richard, I keep saying Richard, but Roger was like... Like, everybody knew what was going on, but he was hiding it and didn't want to, like, talk about it. But then with Ian, he just... nothing. Like, you couldn't read anything off of him until that very last part of the episode. And that's, like, it's so beautiful because they're showing these three sort of, like, phases that a lot of people can go through. Or, like, not even phases that you, you can struggle with every day. Um, and this is... yeah, again, thank you so much, Outlander, for doing that because it's such an importance to show this because... I've had this happen to me and people with mental health or just, you know, they may have anxiety and stuff. You may also connect to it. But, you know, like sometimes when you are in that headspace, you get called names. Like I was called depressed for a very, very long time. And I remember when I was going through counseling, um, my like I always would refer to myself as depressed because everybody else called me depressed. But my I remember my counselor was saying like it's important to not name yourself because you're yeah round of applause because that was just beautifully beautifully done and thank you for doing that and for showing that and again like with how Brianna was reacting that's totally normal. I remember when my parents like you know when I was first known to have depression and anxiety. They were wondering, you know, like, oh, when are you going to get better? Like, is it something that I did wrong? And stuff like that. And th th those are very normal questions, and it's okay to ask that. Um, and that's why with Brianna, it was, like, totally okay. But <laughs> um, just, like, with the forceful stuff, I understand, you know, like, you know, when are you going to wake up? When are you going to come back? Um, but, you know, again, 
the person has to make that choice. And again, Roger made that choice because, you know, he was going through that. And then, you know, he realized, like, how important it is to, you know, perhaps instead of thinking of what could have happened or what happened, stay in the present and remember, you know, he's alive and stuff. So he made that choice. And I hope that we get to see more of Ian because perhaps he might make a better choice too or perhaps not. Never know when <laughs> what Outland is going to throw at us. So... It's going to be interesting to see what else happens, and oh, again, I really, really like this episode. It was just beautifully done. I love that, like, silent film um, part that they put in for, you know, what Roger was going through, and then they slowly embedded the colour. Oh, that was chef's kiss. Amazing. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on the new episode of Outlander. Oh, it was so good. It was very emotionally driven. Uh, beautifully, beautifully directed and beautifully done. And just so smart to put the silent film stuff in there. It was so, so good. <sighs> I'm... Oh, God damn. It was very emotional. So, whew, I'm probably going to go and get some sweets. Settle down and play some Final Fantasy. Maybe we'll see how it goes because the light's going out. Um, quickly... Because uh, there's no more daylight savings here, unfortunately. So now the time is, yeah, 4 o'clock. So the sun's already going down, unfortunately. But anyway, enough of my jabbering. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fangirl, out.